Hi, Wafia, how are you? Hey, thanks. Thank you so much for taking the time to have a chat today. Of course, thank you for having me. First of all, I guess, huge congratulations on the release of Hurricane and also your upcoming EP, Good Things. How are you feeling? Good. I'm feeling so excited. Like, like it's been a while since I put out, like, an EP. And, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just excited to, like, show everyone what I've been up to for the past couple of years. To me, the EP reads like a huge celebration of, I guess, self-love as well as celebrating your friends and, and your support network. Is that what it was supposed to be for you? Definitely. I think, like, I never set out to, like, make anything um, self-deprecating or sad. That's not, that's, like, even in, even in the midst of a breakup, that was not where my headspace was at. So it's, like, it's, I'm glad that it reads that way and it feels positive to you, too. The video itself is such a wholesome video, you know. You're making these treats, delivering them to all your beautiful friends. But in the lyrics, you have these words, you know, where you say, like, I'm alone. And I guess to me, it sort of reads in a way that the video is answering a lot of the questions that you're posing within the song. Is that what you intended with that? Definitely. I think it's like, this song is about the people that when you feel like the hurricane, when you feel like a mess and, and that those are the people that I retreat to. So I, I liked being able to like thank those people in those ways in such a visual way that now gets to like live forever on the internet. Um, but that was definitely uh, intentional. I think it was very easy to connect to that video as well because it was, you know, all these gorgeous homemade treats and it was like you, they were very genuine. There was nothing staged about these homemade videos. I mean, genuinely it was. It's like I would have been doing this anyway on a Sunday. Why not just film it too? So yeah. there's so much to that video that, like, you, I didn't show. Like, we went to a protest so me and my partner and like mapped out where all my friends live in LA and I made my parcels got them all ready put them in the car with the flowers and so we realized like this is during the Black Lives Matter movement like special like I think it was in that first week so like in the midst of that I'm dropping off parcels at my friends houses and then we were like we're in West Hollywood there's a protest at this time let's go do that and again that's just a thing that we did that day and mm -hmm. didn't make it to the video because it, it just didn't like it's not like the space for it but like that day has probably been my favorite day in all of quarantine and it's because I got I got to have a reason to see my friends and and cook for them and they've been like messaging me about these treats for a while now so so it's like it was awesome to finally get it to their doorstep literally did you have to create like a whole bunch of different things sort of cater to everyone's different dietaries thankfully no one had any like crazy dietary restrictions I just sent them a bunch of stuff that that I think that I've really honed in on in my time in quarantine so like these are like the best the best at the time like now my repertoire has expanded a little more but um mm -hmm. yeah it was it was like my favorite ones they didn't get a say <laughs> <laughs> I love that besides I feel like when you're being given a treat like you're just like yes and everything tastes better when someone else makes it I think so too and so how else have you been spending your time I saw that you are a big fan of watching like the paint mixing videos oh yeah I am I painted this dress up <laughs> oh my god no way <laughs> Some neighbors of mine were moving and they left this like kids dresser outside. And just the week before I was like looking up that I needed one and um, they were all like 700 bucks. I was like, and they wouldn't fit in my room. I was like, I need something small. And this, they just happened to put that out for free. Oh so I picked it up. I took it across the street. <laughs> it fit in my bedroom. Then I took it back outside and I bought paint the next day. And that was a one day project. And I love it. I love the color. <laughs> That's so fantastic. You know, you know how like Facebook will hear what you're saying and then serve you the ads. It's almost like your neighbors heard Kate, she needs a dress up. <laughs> I would love to think that they did that. <laughs> yeah. They put it out there with that intention. And so also on the EP is of course your song Pick Me, which I absolutely love this track. It is so empowering and it's such a great reminder that if someone else isn't going to make you a priority, you always have yourself to make a priority. So when you were writing that track, what were you sort of going through at the time? Because I just love it. And it's such an upbeat track as well. Thank you. So, so at the time, like I had just gone through this breakup and a big catalyst for the breakup was that I was making decisions that, that, that benefited me and my ex did not like that like basically sort of wanted me was leaning towards like you know 
less of music, more of us. And I couldn't, it just, I couldn't do that. Like I couldn't give up this, this thing that I worked so hard for, for years for someone. And also I thought that if I had done that for them, that I would inevitably grow to resent them um, or resent myself. And I don't know which one is worse. And so regardless, I think that the relationship I saw doomed from that point on. And so I left. And so this song was just like a reminder to myself that any time I'm backed into a corner, I would pick me. And, and sometimes I think that I'm too giving, um, especially in a relationship, I can be, I can give way too much of myself to another person and that's a flaw. But when I am backed into a corner and, and I'm given that kind of ultimatum, I would pick me every time. And that was a really nice reminder that like, that I will and I can. Absolutely. I think that's a really important thing for everyone to remember. Mm -hmm. And I think as well, it's a really, you know, you say that it's a flaw to give yourself in a relationship, but I think that's a really lovely quality as well to be able to open up to someone like that. Yes, but I think boundaries are also important and that's definitely that's something really I'm working on. So it's like give yourself, but not from a place where you're losing. Yeah, it's so tricky. And especially if like, you know, you have two different people, you got to work different lives together. It's, yeah, it's a very tricky thing. That balance is hard. And so your EP, of course, it you know starts off with Hurricane, which it, and then goes into Pick Me, which I've already fangirled over. <laughs> but then it finishes on Lose a Friend. Why did you pick this song to finish with? Because, like I said, to me, the whole EP feels like such a beautiful celebration of friendship and all those around you. And then finishing on Lose a Friend, it sort of it feels like it's alluding to how do you pick yourself back up after you do lose a friend? But I wonder why you chose to finish the EP on that track. I think when you listen to it all the way, like, and you listen to it again, it like starts back up a hurricane. And that to me is like, in, it's just like you win some and you lose some. And that's a part of, of growing too. And to make space for the good, you have to like shed some baggage. And as like those friendships to me are so difficult, but, um, and that I lost them are really difficult. And put, to me, honestly, harder than um, a relationship breakup. Um, and so it, I wanted to give that a real moment because I think um, that it deserved it. Because <laughs> yeah, like you said, breakups are hard and losing a friend is one of the hardest things in the world ever. <laughs> yeah. So what else have you been doing while you've been in quarantine? So I've been cooking and baking a lot. As you know, I've been painting. I've been doing a lot of reading and yeah, I've just picked up tennis. <laughs> oh, how are you going with it? <laughs> I, used to, I used to play pretty, not seriously, but like I really enjoyed it as a kid. So I thought that going back into the courts, maybe I would still have some of that. I have absolutely none of that. I recall <laughs> nothing. I don't even remember half of the rules. So um, I am a child once more on the tennis court. But it's such a great way to just run around. And, mm -hmm. and I don't really enjoy running or jogging or anything like that. But, like, I will chase after a ball for hours. And so <laughs> that was a really fun thing. Like, it's a fun way to get me up and moving. I love that. Tennis is tricky, though. It's a, it's a good one to jump into. <laughs> Especially right now, like, because it's a good excuse to see my friends, but, like, do it from really far away. Yeah, it's a good, like, social distancing sport. One of my favourite things that I've ever heard you say is nothing is real until two weeks after it's happened. So with the EP coming out next week, is that sort of how you're tackling this as well? You're just going to let it come out next week and then wait for its, you know, that two-week moment to be like, wow, that's happened. Yeah, I think so. I think as well, like, for me that when I said that, I, I definitely um, relate it more to, like, good news or, like, a feature or just I think – it's really hard to commit to people. But what I do know is that my EP is coming out next week. And that much you can believe. I wouldn't lie to you about that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, thank God. Don't take it away from me. It's like what I'm looking forward to next Friday. If I would take it away from you, I'd be taking it away from myself. And I cannot have that. It's keeping me alive right now. Absolutely. Has it, you know, like, how is it feeling now that it is only a week away until it's out? I only clocked that yesterday. 
Like I only sort of realized that. And now it's very daunting because this is to me part of a bigger body of work. And I feel so vulnerable sharing that, but it's also, I think some of my best work, I feel like I've grown a lot as a songwriter and as an artist and as a person to be able to like really fully stand behind the message that I'm giving. And so um, I'm just really proud of the journey that I've been on and also just like of this collection of songs. So you should be. It is a really gorgeous collection. And I think as well, you know, like being able to channel something like a breakup into a body of work like this, but you've put such a positive spin on it as well, on a situation that is, as we've spoken about, is incredibly difficult to come out the other side and just have this amazing thing that you've created. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And so I wonder, what is your creative process? Like when you are going through these moments, do you write them down or is it something that, are you more of a visualizer as well and then you channel it into your music? So I I tend to, it's like a mixture of both. I don't write a full song in the midst of what I'm going through, but I keep very detailed notes. And, And almost like there's a part of me that almost like does it in a way so that I can like, when I write it all out, I can, when I read it again, like a week or so later, I'm exactly right there back in those feelings, mostly for worse. Like, I'm just like, Oh, that, and like, I pity myself. So, so I, I write these really detailed accounts. I, it's almost like journaling. And then when I'm in the studio, I go back to these really, to these really intense moments, but like with a clear point of view and like with logic and reasoning and everything. And then I try to write a song from there as opposed to like, um, yeah. But then sometimes I'm sitting on the couch with someone like in a session and like, like for example, how to lose a friend, I'm sitting there and I'm like connecting with someone for the first time. And it like, pours out of me I'm like my friend blocked me on Instagram or something something that would like spur it on because I'm like vomiting my whole life story to someone new and and then you get that too so I'm I try not to like be very rigid about the way that I have to create I find that it's not by setting rules and limitations it kind of restricts me and how do you go about overcoming that you know you're really burying your soul in a lot of I guess, with any sort of creative work that you release, how do you overcome that? Um, I mean, it is daunting. Like, I think like with, with previous relationships, there's this expectation sort of going into it that, that I would eventually write these songs about pers- uh, these people. And people just never think that it's going to happen to them when I write these songs about them. So I, there's a part of me that wants to protect them from that but also like I have to share that and so that's just sort of what it is in any kind of relationship I think the harder part in in this is that in this body of work I've been very um again especially with how to lose a friend like really honest about very specific friendships in that song that I don't think that my old friends would very much appreciate and I'm I'm actually a little anxious about that so (laughs) Do you feel like you need to give people a heads up when these are coming out or? Maybe that would be the more responsible adult thing to do, but <laughs> I'm, I'm too scared, especially like in that song, there's like a line, like, can't even tell you, I don't like your boyfriend. Like that would, I don't, I don't, and that's not very nice. And like, but it's honest. Mm-hmm. So, so, and um, I, I am a little nervous about, that song coming out and having to like potentially face the music about what I've written about her. (laughs) I guess with lines like that though, it's not as if it's an unwarranted or unjustified, I don't like your partner. It'd be coming from a place of love that you had for that friend. Totally. And I can only hope that the people in my life will always see that like, I loved you so much. I wrote a song about you. Like, I hope that they'll see it as that, but of course people don't always see it the way that you see it. And, and sometimes it's maybe not as flattering. So, um, I, I think my, you know, my ex especially doesn't really like this, but it is what it is. Like, that's kind of the undisclosed contract that you 
go into in having me in your life is that there's an element of public domain where mm-hmm. what I will disclose whatever goes on between our relationship and a song. Yeah. If it's, it's good. <laughs> so is there a particular song off the EP that for you is like your absolute favorite, whether it be the process that you had writing it or just when you're singing it? Yeah, I mean, I love them all for different reasons. Pick Me is so fun. Hurricane is like, it's like a bop. And then, and then Butterflies I performed live for the first time Mm -hmm. um, the other day for like a live video. And oh my God, it feels so good. Like that to me, I think is going to be this, like the silent sort of um, one that creeps up on me. And I think I'm going to love that in different ways. Yeah, I couldn't, I'm sorry, I couldn't pick one. It's all right. You don't have to. It's just say the whole EP. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for taking the time to have a chat today and very exciting that the EP is out next week. Cannot wait for you to have this out in the world. Thank you so much, India. I really appreciate it.